The makers of the coffee you know is fresh, Chase and Sanborn Coffee, whose big September sale now in progress will benefit everyone, present the Chase and Sanborn Hour. And your host, Don Amici. This is the Chase and Sanborn Hour, and this is Don Amici with greetings from all of us. Um, yes, indeed, and greetings from Amici and McCarthy. Yes, Charlie, and from Nelson Eddy, whose great baritone voice has made him the nation's favorite singer. Yes, indeed, greetings from Eddie and McCarthy. And from our own W.C. Fields. Oh, yes, greetings from McCarthy. Yeah, perk up, Charlie. And from Dorothy Lamour. After the bear comes the sweet. From Robert Arm Brewster and Edgar Bergen, and of course, my volunteer assistant, Charlie McCarthy. And our lovely guest, the screen's foremost dramatic actress, Miss Betty Davis. We all hope that you'll enjoy our show and that throughout the week you'll enjoy Chase and Sanborn Coffee. No singer is more loved in the homes of America today than Nelson Eddy, one of the greatest baritones of our time. Nelson puts his personal greeting into a song we all know and love. Nelson Eddy singing... With a song in my heart. Though I know that we meet every night And we couldn't have changed since the last time To my joy and delight It's a new kind of love at first sight Though it's you and it's I all the time Every meeting's a marvelous pastime You're increasingly sweet So whenever we happen to meet I greet you with a song in my heart. I behold your adorable face, just a song at the start. But it soon is a hymn to your grace when the music swells. I'm touching your portals to me, and I help but rejoice that a song such as ours came to be, but I always knew I would live life through. tells a tall tale about a crack-brained king who found himself a new and very strange courtier, a flea. And, as with all tall tales, believe me if you will, Nelson Eddy singing Mussorgsky's famous Song of the Flea. Once long ago was a king who kept a fine fat flea. Flea. A flea. He cherished him as dearly as though a son were he. A flea. <laughs> a flea. <laughs> a flea. He called the royal tailor 
full toil for days and nights to make the plea double and fancy purple tights. Uh, purple tights. <laughs> a flea, oh, a flea, <laughs> purple tights. Oh, dressed in silk and velvet, he'd hop and skip and crawl. Fully, but he had caught, he had, he danced on every ball. <laughs> <laughs> a flea, a minister they made him, he wore a golden star, and swarm the brother fleas came to court, from near and far, ha, ha. <laughs> no, you and I don't worry, for fleas are easy to catch, but think of those poor courtiers, they won't allow to scratch. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slow song, Nelson. I hope it doesn't give Charlie McCarthy any ideas. But maybe with vacation over and school days approaching, Charlie can reform. So let's leave it to Edgar Bergen, who always has the last word on McCarthy intentions. <laughs> well done. I had to do that. Yes, I do. <laughs> I think I got something there. Yeah. Now the thing is how to get rid of it. Oh. Don, I, I, I don't think I'd be far from right now if I said that Charlie's thoughts are of football and hunting and such now that September's here. Am I right, Charlie? Uh, yes, you are, Bergen. But uh, it only takes one thing to ruin fall, and that's school. Uh, I suppose so. <laughs> yes, of course, that's right. School is starting. Mm. Oh, how I remember those days. Yeah. Yes. School days, school days, dear old golden rule days. No, no, no. We don't sing that now. Oh, I see. That's old-fashioned. I see. Well, what is the song? Well, I sing, uh, I sing, it goes like this, see. Uh, looky, 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 let's play hooky. Zazu, zazu, get out of there. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, now, Charlie, Charlie, now don't tell me that you're going to start cutting school again this fall. No. No. What could be more pleasant than a little red schoolhouse? Well, personally, I'll take the brown derby. I... <laughs> What? I'll tell you, Bergen, I feel so foolish, you know, getting out of Carol Lombard's car with school books under my arm. I... <laughs> <laughs> Going to 6A. Mm. But I shouldn't mind 6A. I should be getting used to it for now. <laughs> Mark my words, young man, you will regret your attitude towards school. Yeah. Yes. Remember, knowledge is power. Yeah? Yes. Now, how are you equipped? Well, I'm not exactly muscle-bound. <laughs> I'm just a bundle of nerves, that's all. Just twitching nerves. That's all, just nerves. Twitching, yes. <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> yes. Well, and also, Charlie, uh, success and education, remember. Yes. They work together. Uh-huh. They go hand in hand. Uh-huh. That's the trouble. They're ganging up on me. <laughs> Let me quote Mr. Mann. A human being is not in any proper sense a human being till he is educated. I resent that. No, no, it's not. No, for instance, look at Don Amici. Yeah. Well, I am looking at him. So what? Uh, well, <laughs> do you think that his talents came by accident? I don't know. Do you think he just walked into a broadcasting studio and said, uh, 
I'm going to be an actor, or I am an actor. Eh? You think so? I don't know. Well, you can be sure that something happened before that. Yeah? Yes. Oh, you mean his old man said, go to work? No, no. <laughs> no, I mean schooling and studying. Oh, you're back at that stuff again. Yes. <laughs> oh, Don, uh, Charlie would like your opinion on school and education. You see, Don is a graduate of Wisconsin. <laughs> Is that true, Mr. Nietzsche? Indeed it is, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Study is the salvation of mankind. The young man of today should be grateful that opportunity knocks, where before was only indolence and inactivity. Do tell. <laughs> Book learning. <laughs> well, I never looked at it just that way. In fact, I still can't see it. <laughs> uh, would you advise me to go to school, Mr. Nietzsche? You know, I'm awfully glad you asked me that, Charlie. Very, very glad. You are. Yes. Doesn't take much to make him happy, does it? <laughs> my happiest hours have been spent among my books. Did you ever read Dead Eye Dick, The Demon of Dakota? <laughs> no, Charlie, I can't say that I did. Well, you haven't spent your happiest hours yet. <laughs> There's no reason for not reading it. It only costs a dime. No. <laughs> Charlie, mm-hmm. if you want if you want another example, look at Dorothy Lamour. Now, that's now. I'll be glad to do that. <laughs> If Dorothy was my teacher, I'd stay after school every day. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, Dorothy, I wish you'd talk to Charlie. You seem to have a little influence with him. He doesn't want to go to school this fall. Well, Charlie, if you go to school, I promise to help you with your homework. Oh. You can come over to my house evenings and we can have discussions and debates. Uh-huh. We can study a little, too, can't we? <laughs> Charlie, you're so cute. Oh, Dutta. <laughs> oh, life is sweet. Yes. <laughs> I forget all my studies for Daddy. Yes. Well, play, play. That's all you think of. Yes. Don't you ever think of the higher things? You mean tall girls? No. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm still speaking of education. Oh, you are? Yes. Haven't the examples of Don and Dorothy, haven't they impressed you? Well, you know, yes, they have. Yes. I bet you feel sorry that you didn't go, Mr. Bergman. <laughs> well, you mean, I, I want you to know that I studied at Northwestern Medical School. You did? Yes. You mean the College for Doctors and Fishes? No, Physicians. Yes. Physicians? Yes. Physicians and Sturgeons, no. <laughs> Surgeons? Yes. Surgeons and Fishes. No, no. Yes, um, Forget it. All right. <laughs> well, see, why aren't you a doctor then? Well, after two years of study, I felt that my talents ran along other lines. Oh, I see. You flunked out, huh? No. All right. <laughs> you think you're pretty cute, don't you? Yes. But consider the years to come, young man. Uh-huh. What will you be 50 years from now? Uh, uh 62. No. <laughs> After all, why should I learn a lot of stuff like Latin? I never intend to go there. Go on. It isn't what you learn that's so important, Charlie. It's learning to think. Oh, oh so that's it. Yes. That's why you have mathematical problems such as uh, if X plants 20 rows of potatoes and at the end of each row he puts up a marker. Oh, X marks the spot. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> well, who is X? Well, X is hypothetical. Oh, that is too bad. <laughs> <laughs> He shouldn't be working. Well, no. <laughs> but now remember, why? Why works twice as fast as X? Well, he's feeling good. Well, that helps. <laughs> why don't you get rid of X? Well, maybe we will. <laughs> but why? No X. All right. All right. <laughs> now let's take another problem. Let's. Um, why don't you plant tapioca? Well, I'm <laughs> tapioca wouldn't grow. Well, then we wouldn't have to bother picking it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Suppose you have three cows. Uh, if the second cow gives twice as much milk as the first cow, and the third cow gives half as much milk as the first and the second cow give together, how much milk would you pick, or which cow would you pick? Well, you didn't help that any, did you? <laughs> so far as to say that you ruined it all. I imagine I'll hear more about this. You can't pin it on me. All right, all right. Well, let's go back to where we were. Yes. The three cows. Yes. Now, which one would you pick? Well, personally, I'd work out a parlay on all three. You would. Have I made no impression on you with what I've said about education? 
Yes, you have, Mr. Bergen. You've got me thinking. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. And what are you thinking? I think I'll still go to the Brown Derby. <laughs> While Charlie cooks up schemes to dodge an education, Dorothy L'Amour sings us a song that was written especially for her in the Chase and Sanborn program by that famous team of songwriters, Rogers and Hart. Dorothy introduced this song a while back and so successfully that she's going to sing it again. And I'm going to try a chorus, too, of Please Make Me Be Good. If you want to hold me, you must be brave. Sometimes you must scold me, then I'll behave and be your slave. Please make me be good, keep all of my glances, don't take any chances, please make me be good. I'm not made of wood, no trouble with my sight, keep me within I sight, please make me be good, I adore you, but my foot can Dorothy's song, we add a new note in the form of very pleasant news for you. 
It's about the special September sale on Chase and Sanborn coffee. Hear the facts. Yes, the big September sale on Chase and Sanborn dated coffee is now in full swing. This is your big chance to get dated coffee. The coffee you can be absolutely sure is fresh at reduced prices. Remember, stale coffee not only tastes bitter and rancid, it is actually bad for you to drink. It can make you nervous and jumpy and irritable. It can slow up your digestion. It can give you headaches. To protect you from these bad effects of stale coffee, Chase and Sanborn have a unique dating and rapid delivery system. Every bag of dated coffee is rushed fresh to your grocer by a nationwide fleet of trucks. Speed it to him just like your milk and cream. And every bag is clearly marked with the actual date of delivery. It can't be sold stale. And since freshness is assured, we can pack Chase and Sanborn dated coffee in the economical dated bag that saves you money. Dated coffee is a bargain anytime. And now, during all of September, you can enjoy the benefit of our special September sale prices. Get your share of these extra savings and protect yourself from stale, rancid-tasting coffee at the same time. Order Chase and Sanborn dated coffee. The coffee with freshness guaranteed by dating tomorrow. Popular music can surpass and varied appeal the songs composed by Irving Berlin. Robert Armbruster and the orchestra play a medley of his famous tunes. Academy of Dramatic Arts and Sciences for her magnificent performance in Dangerous, we all felt it a fitting reward for her fine work. To every picture she makes, Miss Davis brings her gift for portraying vivid, passionately human characters. For Warner Brothers, she has just completed It's Love I'm After. For us, Betty Davis plays the girl in an original play, It's a Swell Night. Miss 
Betty Davis as the girl and Don Amici as the boy in Joan Austen's sketch, It's a Swell Night. The scene is the waterfront of a large city on a cold winter night. The lighted riverboats cut silently through the darkness, and the wind whips the water against the wharfs. A girl stands looking out across the river when a young man comes hurrying to the shadows along the dock. He stops staring at the girl, who finally turns and speaks to him. Say, you, why don't you put your coat on? I don't know. What? All the way on, instead of just around your shoulders like that. Well, what's to you anyway, the way I wear my coat? Huh? Well, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, it is cold. It ain't much of a coat you got, huh? No, it ain't. Gee, I'm cold. You know, you're too pretty and too little to be out alone this way. Go on home. Oh, I like to walk at night. I get tired of sitting in a little room. Yeah? It's pretty out here. The lights are pretty on the water. Boats all going someplace. The men don't bother me much. I guess I'm too skinny. Well, that's a funny way to talk. They're pretty. Why don't you sit down for a minute on the, on the edge of the wharf here, hmm? Well, I might as well. I'm not going anywhere. Just walking. Can I sit beside you? Sure. <coughs> Hey, what's the matter? Are you sick? I guess so. I, I got a chill or something. <gasps> Say, you are sick. Oh, let me button your coat. Only one button. Here, here, you can have my scarf till I go. No, 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 not your scarf. You said you was cold. Well, I, I sort of forgot I was cold. Go on, keep it, please. Ain't it funny? Two strangers like us worrying about each other. Yeah, I suppose it is. Why don't you sit close to me and we'll both be warm, huh? Don't get fresh. I ain't fresh. You're out of midnight prowling around by yourself, ain't you? Well, I get lonesome sometimes. Then I come out and walk until I get tired. But you're sick. Why don't you go home? Well, maybe I ain't got no place to go. Well, you ain't kidding for me to take you home. Because if you are... No. Right, you ain't got a place to go when you was looking for a place to sleep here in the docks. That's right. But you can't do that. You'll get pneumonia. You can't do that. What can I do? Get pneumonia? Uh, sure I can. I guess you don't care, do you? You don't care because you ain't got nobody you like. Listen, I got a room with a girl. Maybe you could come home. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, forget it. Say, so what are you doing today? Work? No, no, I don't work. My landlady has a boy. He, he's a nice kid, but he's blind. So I read to him, and three times a week I take him to school. He's learning to make things out of iron or something. I don't know. But doing that for him, I just get my room. They tell me, what do you do? I used to work in an airplane factory. Mechanic. But they closed down. Nobody else seems to want me. Oh, you'll get a job. As soon as you get well. Sure you will. Gee, you're a swell kid. You're different from the girls I know. Why do you think I'm different? I don't know. Such a funny feeling comes over me when I... When I saw you standing here. So quiet. You know, I like you. I don't amount to much. It gets kind of wrong when I was a kid. Maybe it's just the world's wrong. I don't know. I, I guess I'm... Because I'm no good. Oh, don't say that. I know it's tough. Take me. I worked in a factory a while back and now I was laid off. Nobody cares whether I sink or swim. Yeah, but can you swim? <laughs> well, I can swim like a dog, you know, paddle. <laughs> Swimming like that wouldn't keep me up long, though, would it? She you're a great kid. Yes, yeah, sweet. Say, it's a swell night, ain't it? A swell night? It's cold and damp and dark. I don't know. Maybe you're right. It is kind of swell tonight. Mm, that bonfire somebody's got up there smells good, don't it? Yeah, that's because it's damp. Did you ever notice? You know, it's funny. I feel sad when I look at you. I never felt that way before. Sort of soft and warm inside. Gee, what's the matter with me? I, I feel like protecting you. Like I found something I was looking for. Go on, tell me some more. Well, I, I guess maybe... Maybe I love you. I don't know. Bet you only want me for hugging and kissing. Well, ain't that kind. <laughs> Who have I been keeping myself for you? I ain't kidding you. I love you. Must be that, because I, I feel so funny about you. You like me a little? I'll tell you a story about a guy who put me wise. Ma and I got along fine after Pa died for six, seven years. and Well, then she died. I sold everything we had for $300. Whoa, that's a lot of money, gosh. Yeah, well, well, this guy walked home from the factory where we both worked almost every night he walked home with me. Like a sap, I told him that I had that money and, oh, gee, was he sweet on me. He talked something about wide open spaces somewhere out west, I guess, and me going along. 
Oh, it sounded like heaven to me to get away from this dirty, cold city. He was slick, all right. It took him a long time to ask me for the money. <coughs> what a the rat. Well, I gave it to him and waited for him to come for me. But he never came. Gee, you poor little kid. But you believe me, don't you? Well, well this time there's no money to lose anyway. Oh, you shouldn't get so sore at life just because one guy you know let you down. No, you shouldn't. Gee. Gee, if we had that money now, you and me. Yeah, it's too bad you got the money. But I, I love you no matter what. I want you. Always. You mean... You mean marry me? Us two together. Gee, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Not so lonesome anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean marry me. Well... Well, my girlfriend and I will make you well. My landlady is good, and she'll, she'll give me some soup for you when I tell you that you're sick. <laughs> and listen, listen, when she cooks soup, you can smell it all over the house. The girls stick their heads out of the doors, and you ought to hear them. Mmm, yum, soup. She'll give me some when I tell her. Come on. No, just uh, a little longer stay here, will you? I'll never forget this night, never. Well, you, you ain't letting me down. No, no. Only wait a little longer, will you, please? Sure, sure, I'll wait. Ma said you spent a whole life waiting for Pa. Waiting for him to get a job and waiting for him to amount to something. Everything you tried was no good. But waiting for the man you love, well, that must be grand. That must be grand. You think a lot trying to figure things out, don't you? Yeah, you poor kid bucking this world alone. <laughs> I used to sit and watch the ants crossing the path, carrying things as big as they were. Some got stepped on. Well, that, that ended their troubles. Then I'd think I'm like the ants trying to carry something someplace. I never cared if I got stepped on. <laughs> but now I care. Now I care. Yeah, now you got me to love you. Mm. To work for you, to protect you. You got me. Yeah, gee, I'm happy. I got you now to love me. I'm not afraid no more. Ain't it funny I don't feel afraid? And I want to make you happy. Gee. Gee, what's your name? Harry. What's yours? <laughs> Harriet. <laughs> Harry and Harriet. Oh, gosh, that's great. Say <laughs> Say, ain't, ain't that what you call fate? Yeah, fate means you can't help yourself. It wouldn't be any use trying if you thought somebody had things all fixed up for you. Say, is fate a, a somebody? I don't know what it is. But, you know, I was wondering what made me come here tonight. What made you? Well, uh, I was just walking. Uh, I, I didn't want to see nobody. Well, nobody out tonight. Maybe only a cop. Well, does, does, a, does a cop come along here? <laughs> Sometimes. We ain't doing nothing, are we? Oh, no, no, no. Well, then why should we worry? Well, uh, there's... There's something I, I should I should tell you. I should <coughs> listen, you go on home alone. I'm I'm sick and I And leave you here? No, I won't. I should tell you tell you something. I, I gotta tell you something. Tell me when we get home. Come on. Say, don't you wanna go? Come on. Uh, Harriet, Harry, you you're choking <laughs> me. Pull up my scarf. Oh, oh Harry, let go. Well, I want you to get up. Harry, please stick by me. I couldn't live now without you. Stick by me, will you? Oh, I'll stick by you. I love you. Do you hear what I say? So help me. I love you. Now let's go. Say, say there's a man coming. Come on, let's get out of here. Why? Come on, come on, hurry, run. I don't want to see nobody. Hurry. Say, say, wait a minute. What are you running for? Wait! Yeah, what's your hurry, sister? Your boyfriend walked out on you, ain't he? Harry! He beat it. He beat it, the big stiff. Oh, come on, come on. Be a little social. Let go of me. Harry! Gonna protect me, was he? Love me, did he, the big stiff? Oh, fight me, will you? Oh, you get out of here. Get out. You little devil. Go on, he can have you. I don't want any... Harry! If I find you, you're yellow, that's what you are, yellow. And I fell for him. He said he loved me, and I fell for him. Harry, Harry, are you all right? Oh, so you come back. You big stiff. Protected me, did you? Loved me, did you? It's true, Harriet. So help me, I love you. Oh, get out. Get out, Venus. Oh, what are you doing just standing there with your hands hanging there? Handcuffs. Handcuffs. I wanted to tell you, but... but I was ashamed. I thought it was a cop, and then I heard you calling. Handcuffs? Oh, I just... Oh, I'm so happy. And I thought all the time. Gee, I'm happy. Harry, Harry, what did you do? I broke a window in a, in a bakery. You know, you don't care much when you're hungry. Oh, oh, my dear. 
Here, here, let me put your coat over your shoulders and, and button it. Now, now, come along. Walk along close to me. Harriet, Harriet, don't, don't it make any difference to you? No, 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 darling. I, I know how we'll get them off. We'll go down and, and see the cops. Or oh, they won't do much to you. Honest. Not for just breaking a window. Maybe nothing. After I talk to him. Oh, gee, Harriet, you're swell. Come on. Walk close to me. Not too fast. Just like we was going home. Just going home. Thank you, Betty Davis, for that fine performance. And I know that young Charlie McCarthy would like to have a few words with you, but first let me take time to say that the Chase and Sanborn Hour with Nelson Eddy, W.C. Fields, Betty Davis, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, and Dorothy Lamour will continue in just a moment. Betty, I am ready. When I see you, I'm unsteady. <laughs> now remember, Charlie, behave yourself. Miss Davis is a dignified young lady and a fine actress. Do you take me for a cad? Do you, do you regard me as a bounder? Well, I remember what you've done in the past. Put your mind at rest, Thurgan. I shall treat Miss Davis with the respect that one great artist gives another. <laughs> is that a promise? A word of honor. Old chap. Yes. Very well, then. Yes. Uh, Miss Davis? Yes, Mr. Bergen? Uh, Charlie admires your work greatly and wants to meet you. And I've always wanted to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Miss Davis. Welcome, indeed. Thrice welcome. You overwhelm me, Mr. McCarthy. That's not a bad idea. Now, Charlie. No. <laughs> I was carried away, Bergen. Carried away. Mm. No offense, Miss Davis. Well, no offense, Mr. McCarthy. Ah. Uh, Miss Davis, your performance tonight was no less than superb. Are you flattering to all the girls you meet, Mr. McCarthy? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> girls may come and girls may go, but Davis is ever in my heart. <laughs> You're very kind, Mr. McCarthy. <laughs> Nothing, <really>. have <laughs> Miss Davis, I simply adored your picture. I sit on Bergen's knee, but I worship at your feet. <laughs> <laughs> You touch me deeply, Mr. McCarthy. And may I add that I have found your antics constantly amusing? Compared to your art, I am only a buffoon. A thing of rags and tatters. Yes, but under your mask, I am sure something deeper lies. Oh, lies and lies and lies and lies. <laughs> you know, you have a, a certain pathos, a spirit of Pagliacci. You mean Pagliacci wants a cracker? No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't know those things. <laughs> With your acting, you should go far, Mr. McCarthy. Oh, thank you. The farther, the better. Oh, fa mm -hmm. <laughs> How far can I go, Miss Davis? <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> you promised. Yes. No offense, Miss Davis. Oh, no offense, Mr. McCarthy. No. Uh, what would you say, Miss Davis, if I told you I thought you were a honey? <laughs> Charlie. Oh, I won't say it, Bergen. I promise you. I promise. All right. Frankly, I'd like it, Mr. McCarthy. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't promised, Bergen. I might ask you to meet me at luncheon tomorrow, Miss Davis, if I was allowed to say it, but you know how it is. Mm. <laughs> I'd be glad to go. If you hadn't promised Bergen. Yes. You know, I'd ask you for a date tonight if I hadn't promised Bergen. No, 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 that, Charlie. All right. Scram, Bergen, will you scram? <laughs> I have a little hideaway in the hills, Becky. I'd take you there and so forth and so forth and so forth and so forth. <laughs> and I'd be glad to go and ditto and ditto and ditto. <laughs> Charlie, remember. Oh, will you scram, Bergen? And under the stars, Betty, I would tell you how wonderful you are. If, if I you hadn't, hadn't promised, promised Bergen yet. <laughs> Now, remember, Charlie, oh, Scram, Bergen. Miss Davis, I really ought to warn you. Scram, Bergen. <laughs> Mr. 
Charlie may start out with studious intentions, but he always winds up in an amorous mood. The sight of a lovely girl such as Betty Davis invariably gives him that romantic feeling, which is the subject of my song, that old feeling. I saw you last night and got that old feeling. When you came in sight, I got that old feeling. The moment that you danced by, I felt a thrill. And when you caught my eye, my heart stood still. Once again, I seemed to feel that old yearning. And I knew the spark of love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me. It's foolish to start for that old feeling is still in my heart. Can I seem to feel that old yearning? And I knew the spark of love was still burning. There'll be no new romance for me. It's foolish to start for that old feeling. It's still. beams brighter than ever, the light gleams brighter than ever, the nose seems brighter than ever. For back into pictures and with us again, our own W.C. Field. Bill, now that your picture started, how are you feeling? I feel all shot to pieces, darling. Shot to pieces? Yeah, close-ups, close shots, long shots. Well, are they big shots, Bill? All about four fingers. I mean, uh... <laughs> the journey sure read all directions, sir. For a moment, I thought I was back in Bolivia, again. <laughs> I love Bolivia. <laughs> The door slammed again, Bill. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell him to keep that door shut, will you? My nerves are all on edge, Tom. Bill, what's the name of your new picture? Are you good at charades, Don? Oh, yes, Bill. I'll make a game out of it. I'll speak a sentence containing clues to the title of the new picture. New picture's paramount. William LeBaron, thief, uh, chief of... <laughs> Fine fellow, Don. He owns a lot of horses. Keeps livery stable or something. Oh. Can, can I guess too, Mr. Field? You're out. Don't bother me, Charles. Go take a nap under a falling axe. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, what's the sentence? <laughs> oh, here it is, Dad. I put, put it on my nose and make it big. Uh, that oh. wouldn't be necessary, Mr. Field. <laughs> you little fuel. Why? <laughs> fuel would. You can't tell. You know, that may be good. Now. I got it. If I had to do all over again, I'd word it differently. <laughs> I wear a broad smile. This is where you start guessing, Dad. All right, Bill, yeah. I remember big and you remember broad. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Bill. I have a cast in my eye. <laughs> and on my chest I have the numbers one, nine, three, eight. Add six and divide by eight million listeners. Eh, hey, well, it, it wouldn't be the big broadcast in 1938. No, no, uh, no, no, that's too simple. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's high, wide, and handsome. <laughs> But why the eight million listeners, Bill? Well, I just put that in to make it more difficult. <laughs> I guess it's a tomboy in me, Don. I'm just full of old crow, old Nick. 
Hill, what's the plot of your new picture? Well, it's about a circus, Don, full of elephants. One scene, my friend sitting in the circus next to me. He reaches into his pocket. What do you think he finds? I haven't the slightest idea, Bill. A bag of chasing Sanborn coffee. Oh, I might have known he'd find something like that. Yeah, that's the truth, Don. My friend then hands the coffee to the pachyderm. The master, Don... With big elephant. Yeah. Puts the coffee in a great maw, her mouth. She swallows. Her eyes become bleary. She says, What? No sugar? Please pass the cow. It's a talking elephant. <laughs> <laughs> the suspense is awful, Bill. Yeah, the gag is too. <laughs> the elephant swallowed the coffee. <laughs> the bag became a fixed in her thorax. She coughed. She regurgitated. Don, have you ever attended a coffee shower? <laughs> no, Bill, but tell me, did your friend leave then? Uh, not exactly, Don. The elephant reared up in the hind legs, pounced upon my friend's stomach, his abdomen. With all four, she trumped them to death. Oh, that's a very sad story, Bill. Yeah, I couldn't stand to see my friend being mutilated that way. No, of course not, I Bill. I closed my eyes and I walked, ran, I dashed back to my dressing room and I locked the door. Oh, well, that was considerate of you, Bill. Yes, it was, Don. Then there was a knock at the door. Bang, 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 knock, knock, knock. Yeah, all right, Bill. There was a bang, knock at the door. Bang, bang, knock, 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 knock. You would have split your sides laughing, Don, if you'd heard what I said to them. Yeah, what, what did you say to Bill? I didn't answer. Oh. <laughs> that was a fine reply. Yeah, they locked the door again. Knock, knock, knock. Honk, 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 bang, clang, clang. Brrr, brrr. Yeah, all right. Never mind. Fly right, right back in your pillow. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do then, Bill? They, they were I said, who's there? Yeah. I don't know whatever made me thought of such thick of such. <laughs> you said that, that, that Bill? To me. Yes, it did. Yeah. yeah. That's there. Uh, I said, I'm not going to get all hot and bottled, uh, bothered about a thing like that. No, of course not, Bill. <laughs> they shouted, we've got your friend Jones out here. Paul Jones, Don, the producer of Paramount Movie Picture. Yeah, no, no, Bill, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, uh, but they said the elephant has walked all over him. I said, uh, shove him under the door. <laughs> the only thing is saying. Well, what happened then? Oh, they said, come on, Bill, stop your fooling. He said he's hurt, uh, and his wife's going to have a baby. Yeah, what did you say to that, Bill? I said, well, you can't blame that. I said, uh, my conscience is... Co I didn't answer him, Don. <laughs> That's a good reply, too, Bill. Yeah. But I, I didn't even know Paul Jones was married. Oh, he's got 15 children. Is that so? 15 yes. children? Yes, yeah, the biggest producer of Paramount. <laughs> well, tell me, was that the end of your circus picture? Oh, no, that was the first reel, Don. We were making an epic. How do you make an epic? Oh, simple thing in the world, Don. Cowboy spies Indian. Cowboy chases Indian. Cowboy shoots Indian. Fun for everybody but the Indian. <laughs> I see. The Indian escapes the cowboys and flees, huh? I got away from the cowboys and the fleas don't. <laughs> so I go for those cowboy, cowboy and Indian pictures, Bill. Do, eh? Hey, did, did you have a real Indian chief in this picture, Bill? Oh, yeah. Choka Choka Jeebe. Oh, he's back again, huh? Yeah, he flopped last week, so I'm getting him another draft. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the lady the laziest Indian I ever saw. I caught him uh, uh, putting uh, uh, putting popcorn in his flapjacks so they turn over by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> he had a dog he used to bite his nails. He got rid of him. Come on, Bill. Hey, that Indian score was in the picture too, Don. Princess Squat Squat. She became a model. A model? Yeah, she was an a model in an automobile factory. She sit on the platform and they build an automobile around her. She used to specialize in seven passenger limousines. Oh, I see. One day she said to me, pale face feels all but the nose. You remember, Don? Husband said it last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bill, go on. Didn't tell her then either. No. <laughs> she said, hey, she said, uh, uh, she saw Dorothy Moore on the set. And she said to me, she says, am I as fat as that girl over there? What did you tell her, Bill? I said, oh, you're just about the same size. Well, was she, Bill? Don, Dorothy could have worn that squirrel stocking for an evening dress and had enough left over to build a teepee. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of trouble over the picture, Don. Why? What happened, I Bill? A lot of, yeah. What? What happened? Oh, one of the property men uh, dropped an oak leaf on my head and almost cracked my skull. You mean to say that an oak leaf almost cracked your skull? Yeah, it was a leaf out of a dining room table. <laughs> oh, I see. Did it, did it hurt you, Bill? Did it hurt me? How could a 
oak leaf out of a table hurt you by hitting you on the head. No. <laughs> well, did it, did it come as a surprise, yeah. Bill? Oh, I was stunned. <laughs> I played the part of a lunatic in the fix, too, Don. Did you sleep under a crazy quilt, Mr. Field? Yeah, no, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did I sleep under a crazy quilt yet, Charles? I shudder to think of you spending your old age in a beaver dam. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder Mr. Thiel's nose looks like a flame. He's an alcohol burner. <laughs> oh. Charles, the world is getting tired of little people. <laughs> By the way, my new picture is part for you, Charles. You walk into a flaming forest fire. Yeah, but Bill, Charlie can't walk. That'll be all right. I can slow him in. Yeah. There he goes, there he goes. Kicks me around the place like a football. Charles, someday I'll spread your legs apart and use you for goalposts. <laughs> Bill, you know, I, I think you could make something out of Charlie. Yeah, now show him into a hula skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it, Paramount, here I come, action, camera, shoot. Hurry it up, Bolivia! Life action, camera, shoot, he loves Bolivia. Thank you, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, and thank you very much, W.C. Bill loves Bolivia and Charlie loves everybody. Love is certainly taking the country by storm. Yes, love and chasing Sanborn. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. Say, how are your September sales doing? Sailing right along, sailing right along. Did you see my picture in the American Weekly today, Mr. Nietzsche? Yes, Charlie, and a very handsome picture it was, too. Well, I shouldn't have be. It was a picture of me. Yeah, and I saw Bill Field's picture, too. Oh, yes, yeah. They almost had to take an extra page for his nose. <laughs> but go on, Mr. Nietzsche. Tell the world how our Chase and Sanborn sale is going on. All right, Charlie. During the next few seconds, you will hear about the sale that is being welcomed by families all over the United States and Canada. And you will want to listen carefully to this news. All real coffee lovers will want to take advantage of the big September sale on Chase and Sanborn dated coffee that is going on right now and all this month. It's a wonderful opportunity to get dated coffee. The coffee with freshness guaranteed by a dating system at special sale prices. Staleness in coffee is harmful. It not only produces a bitter, rancid taste, it frequently upsets your stomach and your nerves. It can make you headachy and irritable and unhappy. Keep away from it. Chase and Sanborn dated coffee is guaranteed fresh by a great dating and delivery system that rushes every bag fresh to your grocer, just like your milk and cream. And every bag is clearly marked with the delivery date. Look for this date. Dated coffee can't be sold stale and rancid tasting. There is no need for high-priced containers, so we use an inexpensive dated bag. And you get the savings. Dated coffee is always a wonderful buy. And now you get additional savings in our big September sale. Make the most of these special September savings. Find out what real coffee enjoyment means and save money at the same time. Order a pound of Chase and Sanborn dated coffee. The coffee you can be sure is fresh and good for you tomorrow. Against the brilliance and color of Spanish rhythm, Nelson Eddy sings a serenade to a lovely senorita. Nelson Eddy singing Lolita. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
come fai l'olita con le sei il fiore dolce in vita o oh mia l'olita vieni all'amore o oh, viandi letto più non tardare che al seno stretto di bovacciore bovacciore takes us to the land of tall pines and stalwart men with a song of the Canadian Northwest from one of his most famous pictures, Rosemary. Nelson Eddy singing the Song of the Mounties. Far over the snow, what are those voices? They sing as they go, thundering voices. Pack of angry wolves on the trail. We are up to you dead or alive. We are to get you dead or alive. And we'll get you so if you're the one. Better run, better run away. Son, you are done. Throw your gun, throw your gun away. Here come the mounties to get the man that are after now. Thanks from all of us. And since there always must be an ovoir, I'm saying it now for our guest, Miss Betty Davis, and for our regular company, Nelson Eddy, W.C. Fields, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Dorothy Lamour, and Robert Armbruster. And may I say to all of you who have listened to this broadcast that this hour with you is made possible by your purchases of Chase and Sanborn dated coffee. Such purchases are the finest way of telling us that you enjoy our show. 
Next Sunday at the same time, we'll be looking forward to meeting you again for another Chase and Sanborn Hour. This is yours sincerely, Don Amici, saying au revoir. Heard on this program, where with a song in my heart, From Spring Is Here, A Pretty Girl Is Like a Melody, From Zeke Belt Follies, 